Happy Friday. This is Kawi Lucas here at Think Tech with Hawaii is my mainland every week here on, um, at 3 p.m. Last night was the first meeting of the Red Hill Fuel Tank uh, Public Talk. And they did a different format last night. Um, some people tongue in cheek called it a cocktail hour. So let's just say that uh, war fuel and water don't mix. Uh, with me to talk about it is one of the um, newer stars in the Sierra Club constellation, Jody Malinowski, who is the leader of the Oahu group. Welcome, Jody. Hi, Callie. Thanks for having me. So um, this is an issue that Sierra Club has been amazingly um, steadfast with. I think this is my fourth show on the Red Hill fuel tanks, and thank God for Sierra Club. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, appreciate that. <laughs> um, because you guys have, are really uh, sounding the alarm in all the right places. Mm -hmm. So tell us what's new. Well, as as you mentioned last night, there was the public update meeting for Red Hill. Uh, this was a meeting that was hosted by the Navy, the Department of Health, and the Environmental Protection Agency. And it was a little bit different than the last public meeting that we had in October 2016. It was only this kind of cocktail hour uh, poster board presentation without a formal presentation and group Q&A. So it was a little bit of a, a, little bit of a different yeah. format. I, I sort of liked the other one where there was a balance of that, that walk around and talk to the individuals. That was mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm. And we'll have some shots of that. Um, but I really missed the more uh, focused, um, directed, and being able to hear other, other people's. Was that sort of the, the what, did, what did you? Absolutely. Kind of disappointing that at a public meeting there wasn't that larger public forum to have that community group share. I think a lot of people have the same questions. So instead of having to go to individuals and talk over other people, it was, it was very noisy last night, um, kind of discouraged that kind of group learning and sharing. And my understanding was the Navy said that the reason why they formatted it last night as that sort of cocktail hour for two and a half hours instead of just one was because at the meeting in October 2016, not everybody got a chance to go up and ask their question. But then that makes me wonder, why don't we just have more public meetings or allow for a better moderator of those meetings, or uh, better, you know, facilitate them so that yeah, everybody right does have a chance to share. Because I think it is very valuable for the entire community to hear what other people are thinking um, in regards to the Red Hill Tank. So, for those who aren't um, really familiar with this issue, yeah, um, uh, Sierra Club. One of your interns made a very nice video. Um, can you tell us uh, who that was? That sure. was, yeah. Caitlin Rogers, uh, she is a university student from the mainland, but she came in January to learn more about the environmental issues here. She was very interested in water, so uh, we gave her a task of creating this wonderful film on Red Hill, and we really think she did a great job. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at that. Why the water is important to me is because we need to drink water. <laughs> it's not really rocket science. Aside from that first necessity, I use it to farm. I'm Anthony Diluz, um, and I am a Mahiai. This place is called Ka'onohi. Um, it's an ili. It is a part of a larger ahupua'a of Kalawau. And um, it's traditionally was lo'ikalo and we're keeping it that way. I'm trying to first and foremost restore this aina in a traditional manner as much as possible. Um, 
keep as much of the practice and the production as traditional as possible. Red Hill is an important issue to me because there's tanks that are 200 feet tall sitting on top, one of our most important water resources for the island. A water source that big and important is not something that I'm willing to gamble. While with all due respect and the resource of fuel for our Navy and our Pacific fleet, one of the largest underground storage facility tanks in the world, it's important that we also be cognizant of our water quality in that area. It's very impressive to see all the steps that they are taking, both on a technical level as well as a physical level, to safeguard you know, the, um, the quality of the testing that they're doing. The fact that that location is so close to uh, you know, a big chunk of Hawaii's water supply is, is really a very, very serious concern. I feel that 22 years is too long and that we can shorten that gap. 22 years to come up with a plan is a ridiculous proposition. I think it's also ridiculous that we're talking about a 20-year plan to figure out where the um, fuel has moved. We should take as many years as they built it, which is four years, and fix the problem within that time period. I think we should be doing immediate things right now in a huge way. We should be cleaning up right now. Why wait? Why wait 20 years to find out, you know, if we should clean it up then? Clean it up now. This is an urgent problem, uh, and we need people to get involved now uh, to help our public officials recognize the urgency in this issue. The time to get involved is now. The time to get active is right now. I would not be proud to be part of a generation that just kind of turned a blind eye on the most important resource the state has to offer. I know people are very busy and uh, you know, there's a lot of competing interests and it's a, it seems overwhelming sometimes to try to get involved in an issue so important as this. The reality is, is that if we don't get involved now, um, we're going to have a much harder problem to deal with in the future. I totally feel you because I'm busy all day, every day um, with a family of three kids and uh, full-time farming. I know exactly how hard it is. But what would be harder is surviving without water. <laughs> the Sierra Club works hard to make things accessible, um, including testifying and legislation. You can submit testimony any hour of the day um, in writing, and it can be very, very simple. Uh, petitions, um, learning more about the issue, talking to your neighbors. Um, there are a lot of things that you can do uh, to get involved and to help us build a movement to, for urgent action to protect Oahu's water resources. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot of time. We have power, but if we stay silent, we're not going to get anything changed. Without water, there's no life, really. It's all like Kauai. Water is life. Well, that makes it pretty clear why we're here talking about that. Really a good one. Um, so, um, you have some news from us uh, for us that was um, uh, just came out this month. From would you talk about this letter from uh, the EPA? And so let's first frame the um, the administrative order and consent, right. which was signed in 2015, and the the parties are the EPA, the Department of Health. The U.S. Navy and... The Defense Logistics so Agency. Defense. They are who own the fuel in the tank. So it's the four parties. Right. And then um, the Board of Water Supply get, and the State of Hawaii get, uh, are, are involved, but not signatories on this. So they're involved, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. So we've just had four days of meetings with, of those parties. Mm -hmm. And the, the one thing that they're, um, the facilitator guy who I met there, Joe McMahon, who has the thankless task of bringing everybody together. Yes, let's go, Joe. Let's have, <laughs> make it happen. 
um, was he was talking about uh, that, that there was a problem with, with data. Yeah. <laughs> and you have brought a, a letter that addresses that exactly. So go for Correct. it. So there's uh, the administrative order on consent is the 22-year plan that these four parties have agreed to as, as how best to manage and plan for the Red Hill tank. Uh, there's two, well, there's many sections in that, but section six and seven, uh, in September 2016, the EPA and DOH rejected the Navy's scope of work for section six and seven. And uh, what they did is provide interim goals for the Navy to follow. And two of those were an existing data summary that was due in March of this year and a data gap analysis report that was due in April. And I have this letter from the EPA and the State Department of Health that's dated June 7th, 2017 to the Navy, basically saying that, and I'll, I'll read the letter, it says, the Navy continues to demonstrate insufficient understanding of the expertise and level of effort necessary to develop technical, defensible environmental assessment and modeling deliverables required by the AOC. And then it continues by saying, the Navy does not appear to have the appropriate personnel directing this work. The Navy has spent almost two years on the environmental investigation and modeling aspects of the Red Hill AOC, yet little additional information about the environmental conditions in the area has been collected. So basically a slap on the wrist saying you guys need to do better, step up your work. So um, I don't know about the, the conversations you had, but it, it, the conversations I had, and I, I, I spent hmm, at least 20 minutes talking to a fellow in the Navy who's an attorney, mm -hmm. but I didn't know he was a Navy attorney. Um, I know him from, from paddling, so we started off on that lovely ground <laughs> um, and then sort of... Uh, as um, I began to hear, oh, um, you know, just the explanations that went on and on and on about these little details um, about following regulations and um, n n how we're going to do this and we have this regulation and that regulation and how this is all going to fit together. But in looking at the reality of the situation, which is, that there's um, a quarter of a billion uh, gallons of fuel um, over Oahu's aquifer mm -hmm. that doesn't really care yeah. about the regulations. That there, there's, it's not right. It's not so uh, the Sierra Club's main points that the AOC is deficient is one, it's 22 years, which is a long time. By the time this plan is done, the tanks will be nearly 100 years old. And they are located only 100 feet over our primary drinking water aquifer. Uh, also, the AOC doesn't guarantee that the tanks are not going to leak again. And there have been over 30 documented leaks since the Red Hill fuel tanks have been constructed. So it's not unreasonable to assume that there will be other leaks in the future. And the AOC does not guarantee that when there is a future leak that we can clean it up. And we've seen from the January 2014 leak of 27,000 gallons that it has been extremely difficult to locate the fuel that leaked and clean it up based on the hydrology and the geology and just so much unknowns about Red Hill, which begs the question, should we have our tanks storing fuel over our water if we can't clean it up and we can't prevent them from leaking in the future? Well, I <clears throat> can't imagine that there is any way that such a thing could be guaranteed. Um, so uh, I, it just seems like an exercise in rhetoric, actually, mm -hmm. uh, talking about it that way. So what, can, what is, is the Sierra Club suggesting that, that, that we do as far as there's this elaborate um, you know, AOC mm -hmm. process. They have 22 years to come up with a solution. But in the meantime, we're not seeing anything. So what, what, is, what is the Sierra Club saying that we, we can do? Well, they're, they are evaluating the top six options for the tank upgrades. That's going to be due in January 2018. But unfortunately, none of these tank upgrades guarantee that there's not going to be any leaks. The only way to guarantee that there will be no future leaks is to drain the tanks and not, not have the fuel there. So that would be decommissioning the tanks and relocating the fuel. Yeah. So we're, we're going to take a break for a minute, but come back and dig a little deeper. Okay. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. 
It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. We're going to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Try a little more, hard and every morning. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas. And with me today is Jolie Malinowski from the Oahu group of the Sierra Club. So um, we've been talking about the meeting last night um, that was hosted by the Navy, the EPA, and the Department, State of Hawaii Department of Health. And let's see some of those pictures because um, it shows that um, you had mentioned how loud it was, and it, it was it was it was strikingly loud. Um, it doesn't look. Uh, I guess it doesn't really look like it from the picture, but there were these huge fans above us mm. um, that made a lot of noise. And then, um, and this fellow here, Mark um, Manfredi. Manfredi, who was the recipient of the letter that you just wrote us. So he's the he's the guy. He is the man. Um, uh, it's his job to uh, head up this process. So he's a 30-year Navy guy. Um, but he's been in Hawaii for, for 12 years, and he's going to stay here. He's no longer in the military. So I know that's been a problem, that mm -hmm. there's been changeover. So um, how's the communication um, that the Sierra, has the Sierra Club had much communication with him? Yeah, uh, we, during this past legislative session, we did have a meeting. Um, it, was, it was around the Red Hill Bill, which was SB 1259. But we right. did have probably a three-hour meeting with the Navy. And, of course, we do show up to the public meetings. They keep tabs on what we're doing too, so I'm sure they're watching. Yes, I was. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's nice to be. It's nice to be well known, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, how do we get beyond this? How do we begin to get beyond the 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 Navy sending spies to Sierra Club meetings? <laughs> They should at least come in, in drag or something. <laughs> um, but to, to, to really change the, the, the conversation, uh, what do you think it's going to take? Well, we've seen from other areas and other public issues around water that what it really takes is grassroots activism. We need to build a community movement to really uh, create the political will and pressure that's necessary to ensure that we protect our groundwater and drinking water. Um, so it starts with just getting educated on the issue, sharing this information with your neighbors, um, canvassing around your community, joining us in petition signatures, and it really can build up from this grassroots level uh, to really um, figure out a solution. How, do, how can we speed up this process a little bit quicker? And we have to put the pressure, we have to get the pots boiling to really okay. make the change. So uh, Sierra Club has been actually pounding the pavement. Right? You yep. guys have been getting out there, and not just in the Red Hill area. I've seen some of you, you guys made some really nice little door hangers that are um, breaking this. It's, it's a ridiculously complicated issue in some senses, and then it's really simple in others. But um, I thought you guys did a, a, a good job in, in uh, winnowing down the information. So where did you guys go hanging these doors? The first place that we went to was the Kalihi neighborhood, where we did canvassing with the door hangers. We're going to continue to do more, so we need lots of help, uh, feet on the ground doing okay. this. We've, uh, we've been into many of the communities, doing community meetings to educate residents about the issue. Um, the aquifer that's underneath Red Hill serves residents and visitors from Wanalua to Hawaii, so a large chunk of the island. There's a lot that needs to be explored and a lot of education that can be done within those communities. Okay, so that's the overall game plan. And you've also taken some uh, concrete um, legal maneuvers, right? Didn't you, um, you submitted a petition to the Department of Health? Yes, right? so we're awaiting to hear a response from the Department of Health. I think they have until Monday to respond. We uh, sent them a formal petition uh, basically saying that they need to upgrade their underground storage tank rules 
1992, the state legislature directed the Department of Health to adopt new rules on underground storage tanks by 1998, and the Department of Health needs to do that. So uh, we've submitted that formal petition. We're awaiting to hear their response. Are they going to make rules? Are they not going to make rules? How long is it going to take, et cetera? Since 19, I just have to repeat that. Since 1998, that was when the rules were supposed to be made by the Department of Health? Yes. Well, that was that well, well, well. Statute, yes. <laughs> um, but it's still on the books, so it's still good. Okay. So uh, is there um, within that, so on Monday, they have until Monday to respond to Sierra Club's mm -hmm. petition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, and anything, so going out into the neighborhoods mm -hmm. and letting people know that the Navy is serious. They are really serious. They have put a lot of time and effort and money into this. We see that. We see that. And I keep thinking, how can it be worth it? How can it be worth it for them? But um, we have some pictures of, their, of those uh, uh, boards that they had. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what you were talking about, right? The tank upgrades. So they have these ideas that if you have a different kind of lining, it'll be, it'll be better. Um, but that's still an awful lot of uh, fuel sitting on top of the aquifer. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things um, that they had, I, my favorite place, I hung out there just because I like the energy, <laughs> was the alternatives. Mm -hmm. Did you have a chance to talk with them at all? Um, I did see the alternate site requirements. Uh, I did ask the Navy official who was there what are some of the places that they were considering, what the timeline is for this report, and of course it's all classified. So. I don't know how seriously they're considering relocating the fuel. I think it's an afterthought. Their priority is maintaining Red Hill. Um, they say that it's necessary for our national security. And right now, it doesn't seem like they're willing to give it up. So. I had a chat with a guy who's with the Defense Logistics Agency over there. And actually, we had a long chat. And um, uh, he was really a technical guy. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so he had some really interesting things to say. Uh, one that um, they're looking, well, the, the fuel that's actually stored there is, is a kind of kerosene, evidently. And um, it's mostly used for, it's not something you can put in your car, so all these ideas like if we get it bombed or something and we can all use the fuel, no, no, we can't. Um, but it can be used to generate energy mm -hmm. if the general at the time uh, is, thinks that Oahu, uh, that's a good use for it. So there's, there's this myth that they've been building that, the, that we need these, right? Mm -hmm. But what he said was interesting. He said that they're trying to standardize the fuel in a way so that standard jet fuel that everybody uses um, could be stored there and then they uh, could be stored, but wouldn't have to be stored there, just could be stored. And then they have these special additives. He wouldn't tell me how much it was, but I thought, so even if I don't understand the chemistry to this, mm -hmm. somebody there is thinking about other ways of doing this that doesn't really have to do with the tanks up there. And how can we support that? You know. Um, anyway, he <laughs> said that they, weren't, they were going to announce in um, August, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So that was one of those things, right? Hopefully, in August, who, um, who gets to go and do the study? So maybe we'll find out a little bit more. Yeah. That would be great. So, yeah. So in the meantime, I happen to um, um, hear that you guys are also um, on the eastern side of Oahu um, for another reason besides spreading awareness about mm. the fuel tanks. You want to talk a little bit about that? This is something I've been hearing in neighborhood board meetings. So. Talk about the trail, trail work that um, Sierra Club is doing. Well, the Sierra Club has started kind of as a hiking organization. We've been almost 50 years in Hawaii. We do a lot of service projects and hikes. Um, trail access is a main issue. I think we're experiencing now there are 9 million tourists annually. They yes. are uh, having an impact on our trails. And so uh, the Sierra Club is looking into ways that we can better maintain our trails, better educate our visitors and our hikers so that they know best practices. There are several areas of interest. I mean, Haiku Stairs, the Stairways to Heaven. Uh, there's Manawili Trail. There's Kuli'o'o. So there are 
several trails that we've seen uh, increase in visitors and foot traffic in, and it's, it's a priority of our club to make sure that we can keep those trails open and keep them beautiful and maintain the ne uh, native vegetation and the plants and the wildlife that are there. Yep. Um, but those, haven't they been closed? Uh, is the Stairway to Heaven? Stairway to Heaven, um, currently there is a process going on with the Board of Water Supply. They own the stairs and uh, hopefully we're not going to get them permanently shut down. We, the, the, the proposal is to maybe remove the stairs and what we want to do is find a way that we can keep it open. Maybe uh, transferring management of the stairs to a local nonprofit or someone who could better uh, regulate how many people are going, giving a permanent uh, permitting system, something, some solution besides tearing down the stairs. That would be so wonderful if yeah. we could get in place a system for regulating the number of people going. I was at a, a Kuyo O uh, neighborhood board meeting, mm -hmm. and I felt so sorry for the people who live at the at the trailhead. They said that they get um, uh, thirteen hundred visitors mm -hmm. on on long weekends, and that's yeah. That's just, that's too much. I know something that happened in the past is they closed Mariner's Ridge, which was right. a trail that was adjacent to Kulio. So there has been a lot of people funneling into Kulio O Trail. And we've seen, you know, an increase in, in the amount of people who are going. But the residents are concerned because they're taking up parking. They're maybe trekking through their lawn, leaving their Opala, making a lot of noise. So it's really about just being courteous when you're hiking, being safe and well prepared. and you know, thinking about the residents and how, how your hiking is affecting other people and, and Hawaii because the main reason, well, I like to think that people come visit Hawaii is it's so beautiful and we want to be able to maintain that. Yes. So, um, in our last two minutes, um, is there any other project that uh, Sierra Club is involved in right now that you'd like to let us know about? Sure. Um, the Sierra Club Oahu group is very active at the city council level. Uh, the Sierra Club is unique that we are an environmental nonprofit organization, but we do focus on a wide variety of issues. So climate change, clean energy, local food, water security at Red Hill, uh, waste reduction. So we're pretty active at the city council now, focusing on several different bills uh, that are circulating. We recently just got the Office of Climate Change, Sustainability and Resiliency, the first ever in the state, fully funded. So we're pretty excited about that. And we're working on that's the 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 100 resilient cities correct. position. Yes, correct. So you're going to be working. Somebody from the Sierra Club is going to be working with the office. That so um, they are currently hiring for this office. It's going to be five full time employees. Um, two of those employees. One is going to be an energy project manager to work on getting the city to be more energy efficient and ultimately save the city a lot of money. Right. Um, sure and uh, also a coastal waterways project manager, somebody to manage how we're gonna uh, deal with our infrastructure in relation to sea level rise. So long-term planning, well, such important, fantastic. crucial work. We're very happy, hopeful that, that some meaningful work will be done in this office and really looking forward to working with them. Well, Jody, thank you so much for um, coming to Think Tech and having a chat with us and getting us up to speed and, and mostly thanks for the time you're not in the studio and are out there pounding the trails. Aloha. <laughs> Thank you.